Hi and welcome back to a new video. I'm Andre and in this process overview I will show you how I made something like a lazy blade runner hard drive in Blender, nicely merging organic shapes with flat surfaces dealing with subdivision, bevels and booleans. Especially tricky if you want to add details or cuts like the ones on the bottom part of this object. It was a very long and tedious project but if you are looking for something more step by step beginner friendly you can check my previous phone or speaker tutorials. Links in the description. Probably a CAD software is better for this kind of shapes, but anyway, I was stubborn enough to finish this in Blender. I did learn a lot and hopefully it's going to be useful to someone else as well. I tried to keep it as close to the original as possible, following dimensions and using lots of reference images. Even though with organic shapes, it will be very hard to replicate 100%. To avoid having this size guide shape hiding other objects, I set it to only show bounds. For the blades, it's just a cube resized to match the reference image. It would be much simpler if it was a perfectly flat surface, but instead it has this rhombus-like shape, which I did adding loop cuts and scaling them on the y-axis. To preview the end result, I temporarily added a bevel modifier, applied scale to fix the broken corners and added a subdivision modifier as well. With one done, time to add an array modifier with constant offset for distance. Just in case I saved one of the blades as backup and you will see me do this often through the video. I think it's a good habit to have especially for cases where you need to test things and you can't go easily back to adjust something if you mess it up. Flatten the outer sides and the blades are good to go. For the organic shape, it's a cube which I resized to reach exactly the middle of the outer blades with the help of snapping. This is important because I want to add cuts and subdivisions matching with the blades and the space between them. So when I merge this shape with the blades, first it will avoid uh, making the cuts appear at different places for each blade and it will also help with keeping a nice curvature in between the blades with the subdivision. I added a few loop cuts the other way as well, but you see it's kind of uh, difficult to manage. That's why before this, you may notice I duplicated the shape to use as a guide with fewer loop cuts so it's a bit easier. I will shrink wrap the one with more cuts to the simpler guide one later. To avoid making it curved at the ends I, I removed the side for both of them and then it's just a lot of back and forth to get the shape you want. I spent probably a couple of hours doing this and after a point you just have to say it's okay because the refer the because first the reference image being in perspective instead of photographic or a CAD file it's going to be very hard to match exactly and a part of that with the shrink wrap there will be some variations and we'll need to do some more refinements later anyway. At least adding the subdivision modifier and checking with different markups helps us to see what the end object will look like and getting a better idea how close it is to the reference based on how you see light reflecting. Now backup just in case, with M I moved all, the, all these backups to a backup collection and it's time to add the shrink wrap modifier, set target to the guide mesh and wrap mode to project and check negative. You see that it doesn't follow exactly the shape and that is because it doesn't have enough geometry to do so, so I'm going to add a subdivision. To fix this I scaled a bit the guide on Y axis and if you scale the main shape instead of the guide, it will not match with the spacing between blades later, like I mentioned before, when we match. So that's why I'm scaling the guide. Now it's not exactly following the guide, it would need to have even more geometry, which I don't want to add. So instead I'm going to edit the guide to make it closer to where the object was supposed to be. What we try to do here is have more or less the lines at the same distance and of course not overlapping, so I'm just moving them around until they are more uniform. With X-Ray enabled, I'm going to make sure that at least the middle ones are exactly at the same place, scaling, selecting and scaling to zero on X-axis. And this will make it easier to cut the blades as well after merging them, creating more quads uh, so the subdivision works better. Even if you apply the shrink wrap, you can still do some adjustments, selecting the line and 
pressing G twice, you will be able to move one of the lines along with the edges. For the flatter section at the bottom, I need to make one of the edges flat to set the level which I match to the blade look at position. I did have to fix a bit the surroundings, maybe leaving this as it was and just using a boolean and that more geometry would have been easier but I decided to just roll with it in case it would break the subdivision later. Selecting what section I want to be flat, I added a small inset so when I scale to Z to zero on Z axis it makes it flat and it doesn't create big slopes on the sides of the section. And since I'm about to join the rounded shape with the blades, now it's time for any last fixes and adjustments. Because it will be much harder to do later, if not straight up not doable. Before joining, I checked again all the, that all the edges at very similar pos positions are aligned, preparing to cut the blades next, and to join both objects, it's a boolean modifier added to the blades, set to union, with the rounded part selected as the, in the object field, and apply. If you have bevels or subdivisions, just to see how it would look previously, the boolean needs to be after those in the list. To cut the blades, I'm using K for knife, Z to make sure the cuts, to make sure it cuts through the back part as well, not just to the visible sections, C to constrain it to 90 degree angles, and with the magnet icon set to vertices, I do the first cut. You can, instead of applying, press E and continue the rest of the cuts, and when you are done, enter to confirm. Now, if you look close, you will see that in some places there are two or more vertices very close, which will break our bevel and subdivision later. So with snapping to vertex and auto merge vertices enabled, you can grab and merge these close ones. Other way is selecting all with A and M to merge by distance. But be careful, you don't end up merging something you don't want to. To avoid that, either reduce the distance or unselect areas that are very close together and 84 vertices gone. As a side effect, now you have vertices left alone in the middle of the edges. And to remove them, select one of them, go to select, select similar, amount of connecting edges, and dissolve vertices. This will get rid of all of them. To nicely bevel where the round shape meets the blades, I need to select all those edges. The quicker way I thought of doing this is by selecting the blade sides, going to select, select similar, normal, and uh, tweak this value if it doesn't get all of them in one go, then H to hide them. Repeat the process for the other side, and with shift alt, select what's left from the blades. And just in case I need it later, and I will for sure when I will bevel the edges, I will create a vertex group called blades and assign the selection to this group so I can easily select it. With this contemporary piece of art here, after hiding the blade group, I can easily select all the edges that will be the junction with the blades and the round shape. and add them to another vertex group, which I will use for a bevel modifier. If I didn't have another cut in between each of these blades, the bevel modifier would have also beveled each one of the connecting edges in between the, in the, in between the blades. For the bevel, it's a bevel modifier with limit method set to vertex group and selecting our group that I just created before. I can't go too, too big with this because I will want to leave space for another bevel on the outer part of the blades. And I also don't want too many segments because all that will be subdivided later and it will be way too much geometry. For the outer edge bevel, I, I went back to the vertex group and selected the blades one. With X-ray enabled and the edge selection, I removed all edges in the middle of the blades and I added back just the ones on the corners. I have to use edge weight here to control the bevel modifier, otherwise it will also bevel the small edges connecting both sides of each blade, since it doesn't have any more geometry in between them. Adding a subdivision modifier looks nice, and I really like how the light bounces on the edges, but I did run into some small issues, and I will fix those after I apply the bevel modifier. But before I can do that, I will need to fix, I will, I will need to finish the flat section at the underside.
To do that, I just slowly cut away and rebuild by adding faces in the now empty spaces to create a flat surface. Then I added weight to edges accordingly or added or removed vertices to the vertex group controlling the bevel so everything works fine again. I had some artifacts at the end of each blade. Uh, see these little triangles? Now to fix them, it needs a bit more geometry. It can be a look at all around our objects. But I thought it's better to just subdivide this small part here. Now Blender automatically adds these newly generated vertices to the, to the group that controls the bevels. So I need to remove them from that group. I don't know if this is possible to avoid. Uh, some more adjustments to make the bevel work nice, especially on the sides, is I had this line artifact and again needs more geometry, so I just took the knife with K and added a few more edges here. For better shading, I used weighted normal modifier set, set to face area and it looks, I think, much better now. After a quick backup and applying the bevel modifiers, it's time to fix the subdivision mess. Uh, it, it's happening because the blade loop cuts get to the edges of the round shape and it affects how it subdivides. Now to fix it, it's a slow process of removing all these little edges that go over the bevel, going over all the points where the blade loop cuts meet the round shape. So this took quite a while because you have to go one by one. I don't think there is a quicker way. That fixes most of it. For other places like this one, it's not enough geometry. So I'm selecting one vertex at the top on the lower side and with J, it creates edges joining them, adding geometry and fixing the subdivision. For the cutout, I built a cutter object based on these four vertices that serve as corners and uh, added a bevel modifier. The plan is to duplicate both the hard drive and cutter. On the first one, I'm going to add the boolean set to difference on the hard drive to create this hole. Then I'm doing some vertex cleanup so I can bevel this. To select all, I'm, I'm selecting the sides, then unselecting edges, so it leaves only what I want. I did try to bev I, I did try with a bevel modifier, but it was very slow, almost broke my computer, so I did it with Ctrl B instead. This space here, I think it happens because somewhere the bevel is overlapping some other geometry but uh, it went away with a very slight scaling. For the second duplicate I made earlier, before cutting the cover, I need to finish what's supposed to be flat on it. To remove this part without struggling like this, it's much quicker with X-ray enabled Hide the top part and quickly selecting uh, to remove. To cover this empty area, just hitting F will create additional edges. So make sure when you do something like this to select all the outer edges of the space you want to cover. To separate the cover, I added a boolean set to intersect, but this time on the cutter instead of on the hard drive. As I did for the inner cutout, I'm facing the outer edges so I can add a bevel. And uh, yes, the geometry here is a complete disaster, but uh, the end render looks fine and I just wanted to finish this project so I was okay with it, even though it's obviously not the kind of geometry that you would aim for. For this kind of um, reflection problems at the edge, you can use a weighted normal modifier and it will most likely do the trick.
For the plus, I first added the references and built it on the wrong side of the freaking hard drive. So I did all of this again on the correct side uh, and then I didn't record the second part, but it's the same process. So just make sure when you are doing something like this, build it on the right place. Same tricks as before, bevel modifier with a weight in normal to hide any defects in shadowing. And to create a small cutout around it, I duplicated this and added a solidify modifier to it to make it a bit thicker. Then it's a boolean set to difference. To fix the shading in the hard drive, I had to increase the weight in the weight and normal modifier. With this boolean applied, now I can select all those edges and add a small bevel here as well for a bit of extra realism. In terms of materials, for the metal texture, it's a very simple one. Basically, this noise texture drives roughness to add some small shiny variations, getting this aluminum look. Sometimes with very small noise textures like here, it's not rendered in an uniform way, leaving some strange lines depending on the shape. And a little trick to fix them is with a mapping node in between the texture coordinate and, no and noise texture, you change the rotation and location and it will disappear. For the plus, I try to make it look like there's a lead right in the middle. On top you see it's a mask made out of a gradient texture set to spherical and adjust the location in the mapping node so it matches the plus. Below you see that it's just to normal um, principal BSDF with different emissions. So the center is a bit brighter uh, both in, in light power and in color than the outer side. And that's basically it. If this video was useful to you in some way, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Until next time, take care.